Hey everybody, so I wanted to show you how I would solve the worksheet that I gave out in class a couple weeks ago now because some of us didn't have the um, time to go over it together in class. So the idea here is you've already done this homework yourself. It isn't going to do you any good to watch me solve the problems. Believe it or not, I could show you this a thousand times and it's not going to help you if you haven't tried to engage with the material before that. So the best strategy is do the homework yourself. Even if you get stumped, try your best. Try to you know, take some risks. Do some stuff with it. Then come on here and watch me do it. You can even write down you know, with me as you go along. That's a helpful thing for your brain. Um, and then the most important part is to reflect on what I did differently or what mistakes you might have made. Sometimes differences don't make mistakes. Sometimes it's just different, but um, if we get different answers, that's not good. Okay, so here we go. Here's, here's the first problem. And we're given two equations, basically, but they're kind of derived from the same thing. The two facts that we have from the beginning uh, is this equation. And the C can be an S sometimes, just depending. Um, there's no standard there. And then also, the, the Q of one object for example, um, if you have like a cold object like water in contact with something hot, it's going to be equal but opposite to the heat. Um, oops, sorry. Let's say hot here. The heat of the hotter thing. Okay, so in other words, the hot object gives up energy to the cold object. So it's like a bank account balance. This is negative because it's giving up the heat the cold object is positive because it's gaining the heat. So those are the two basic facts that we're going to use in this worksheet. So for question number one, I read the problem and it's looking for joules of heat. So quickly I know that heat is Q. I like to assign that so I know what I'm looking for. And it's required to raise the temperature of 140 grams. Okay, that is a mass. So I'm going to put that down in my list of variables. So as I'm reading the question, I'm trying to pick apart the information that I have and the information that it's looking for. Um, and it's going to raise the temperature, so that's going to be a positive change. Raise is positive. From 20 to 60 degrees. So again, from means where that's where I'm starting, so that's the initial. Two is the final. So when I do a delta T, it's going to be like this. It's going to be 60.0 degrees Celsius minus 20.0 because it's always final minus initial. So here this difference is 40 degrees. Now it's really important to pay attention to significant digits of course. So this has three significant figures and when we subtract it's actually the place value that matters. They both have a tenths place so my answer must have a tenths place. And then when I plug this number into my equation I'm going to make sure to keep those zeros because they're significant. So we're trying to find Q. The mass is 145 grams. The next variable, by the way, I don't write it explicitly, but mass times C times delta T, that's what I mean. So 145 grams times the heat capacity. Well, they don't give it to me, but the heat capacity of water is a constant. Okay. Um, and then I multiply by the change in temperature. So here we have the full equation. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I am just entered in my calculator 145 times 418 times 40. And the calculator says this. It says 2, 4, 2, 4, 4. And let's see. So the units are important here because if I've got it arranged right, I should end up with a heat unit. So grams is going to cancel because they're on opposite sides. And degrees Celsius is also going to cancel because they're on opposite sides. So we get joules left over at the end of that calculation, which is an energy unit. So that's good. Um, I'm just going to write a comma there. So 24,244 joules is what the calculator says. Now I know that I can't keep all of those numbers because I only have three significant digits in all of these numbers that I'm multiplying. So I got to keep a 2, a 4, oops, 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 ignore that, I got that wrong. So it's 2, 4, the comma stays, and another 2, and then these, these get rounded. So 
So that's my final answer. Okay, so the next one. So if 600 grams, that's going to be the mass. And there's a dot there because that means that those two zeros are significant. So 600 grams of water lost 27.0 kilojoules of heat. So loss means negative. It's going to lose the heat. I'm used to seeing the symbol for kilojoules is little uh, K, big J. I'm used to seeing heat as joules, so I'm just going to go ahead right away and try to get that into the familiar unit that I'm used to seeing because I feel like the units are going to cancel better that way. Now, the problem is that I can't show significant zero very well this way. This is a significant zero, but these are not. Okay, so I just kind of note that for myself, so at the end I know what to do. Um, oh, and it's water again, so I know that this is going to be the heat capacity. Oh, and that's why that's why the joules need to be converted, because I have joules here now, and I've got joules there, so they'll, they'll match. So this problem is looking for delta T. So this time, I know the Q. Oh, I forgot my unit up here. I got so worked up about those sig figs, right? So this is our last significant zero. Uh, I know the Q, and it's going to equal the mass times the heat capacity. Now, there's other ways to solve this. It's okay to rearrange the equation first, so I'll, I'll just do that in a second, but it's also okay to plug it in. Whichever way you go is fine. Um, there's also several ways to do this multiplication. I like to do 600 times 4.18, but it's not wrong to, to divide first. That's okay too. So we get 2508, and the grams are gonna cancel, but the joules and degrees C do not. And that is still times by this temperature. I haven't done anything with that. All I'm doing is going 600 times 418. So this is still there. Okay. And then in the next step, what I have to do is get the delta T on its own. So I'm going to undo that multiplication by dividing. Uh, so that means I have a joules on the bottom and a joules on the top. And what I am left with is an inverse degrees on the bottom. So when we have a fraction on the bottom of a fraction, it means that that unit pops up to the top. So after I go 27,000 divided by that 2508, I'm going to say that delta T is equal to, the calculator says uh, 10.7656. That's going to be degrees C because I have the inverse in a denominator over here, so that becomes on top over here. Now, sig figs. We had three here, three here, and three here. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, so I keep it at 10.8 degrees Celsius, because this is a six, so i got to round up. If I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video. You can even use in YouTube. You can slow things down. Feel free to do any of that, whatever helps you. All right, I'm just going to keep going, because there's no one here to ask me questions, so I don't know what you don't know. As always, I'll, oh, you can email me when you have questions. All right, so some water is heated from 10 degrees, so from, that's my starting, to, that's my ending. So I know right away I can do a delta T, right? So it's going to be 70.0 minus 10.0. Okay, so that'll be 60.0. Don't write just 60. Remember, your significant figures matter. Uh, we used 40 kilojoules of heat, so again, that's kilojoules is heat, so that's Q. I'm probably going to need to convert that because we always need joules. In this relationship, by the way, this comes from the metric system. It's from our definition of what a kilo means, right? Okay, so this is the last significant zero. What is the mass of the water heated? Oh, and so heat capacity, since it's water, is still the same thing. Seeing a pattern here? We talk about water a lot because it's really accessible. Okay, so we're trying to find mass. So I'm going to plug in what I have. I have 40,000 joules for Q. Mass is just something I don't know. The heat capacity, I do know. 
and I do know that there's a 60 degree temperature change. So this is very similar mathematically to the last problem. So I'm going to show you a different approach to, um, to the math. So we have this equation. That's what I'm pulling my numbers into. Um, I know that I'm trying to find the M. So what I can do before plugging anything in is divide by the other things, because this is all multiplied together. So if I want to undo it, I just divide to make these cancel. OK, and so but i got to do that on both sides. So you can kind of make your own little formula before you plug in any numbers. And a lot of the time, people get less confused about the units when they do that. Um, so you'll get to the same place either way. Whichever method you use will get you there. The bottom part is multiplied separately, so this part needs to be done first. So when I put in the calculator, for my calculator, I like to use parentheses, so I put in 40,000 divided by open parentheses, so that's the one that looks like this, 4.18 times 60, and then I close the parentheses, and the calculator tells me that the mass is 159.49. Um, joules canceled, degrees C canceled, so that leaves us with grams. Now, I only had three sig figs because this was significant, and that's three, so I'm going to just say 159 grams is my final answer. <clears throat> All right, so specific heat is the C, so that's what we're trying to find. We have 950 joules of heat, so that's Q. This time I don't need to convert it, it's already there. Oh, and that's mass. So this is not water, this is something different. It's an unknown substance. Well, I suppose it might be water, we don't know, it's unknown. Um, oh, from and to, so I can do a delta T here. It's gonna be 42.0 degrees Celsius minus 18. And the calculator says that that is 24 degrees. Now. Again, sig figs, there is a zero in the tenths place. So even though the calculator thinks the answer is 24, it's actually 24.0. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to do the thing where I rearrange first. I'm trying to find C, so I'm going to try to put everything else on the other side. So I'll get rid of the M and the delta T by dividing on both sides. So we end up with... Q divided by M delta T equals the C. And so Q in this case is 950 joules divided by the mass, which is 20 grams, oops, times the change in temperature. And again, the bottom part is being multiplied first, and then you do your division. So I make sure to use parentheses in my calculator. You can do it separately. You could go 20 times 24 and then um, put that at the bottom of your fraction. So the heat capacity is 1.97917. So I only have three figures. Okay, so I got to keep one, two, three. So we're going to round at this point. So 1.98. The Nothing cancels. So the unit, this is why heat capacity has such a crazy unit because it's the heat divided by the mass divided by the volume, uh, the temperature change. So that's our final answer. And so now I could go look in a big table and find out what that is, um, or at least have a more, a few choices that are around there anyway. It's not perfect. Okay, so mercury, this is mercury. I know mercury is dangerous. So that's interesting, it's a liquid too. It has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.139 joules per gram degree C, so that's that. Um, we're trying to find heat, and mass is 12.8. Oh, and from 2, so we're going to do our delta T. And we're going to have a tenths place again, because again, that's what a thermometer is actually measured to. So we want to be in the habit of, of doing that, because our temperatures need to be measured accurately, or we won't have enough significant digits. Okay, so this one is just going to plug straight in. So it's just like the water problems we did, except it's about mercury, so the heat capacity is different. But they gave it to us, so that's okay. 
if they don't give it to you, you can always go look in your book. There's that table in the book, uh, which is a good resource. So degree C and grams both cancel, and we get joules. So Q equals. Twenty nine point one seven eight nine joules. Now I have four figures here, but only three here. This zero doesn't count. It's not significant. That has three. So we're gonna round to three. So we're looking for heat here, but in kilojoules, which is unusual. So that means there's gonna be a conversion. Okay. Um, we have 0.5 liters. Well, that's interesting. We have a volume. The symbol for volume, if you're curious, is V. Um, and from and to, this is familiar to us. So we can calculate a delta T. Uh, so there's that. Uh, we know the heat capacity because it says it's water, so that's still 4.18 joules per gram degree C. So the only thing that we don't know from the formula is mass. And we are given a volume which we haven't used, and we there is a connection between mass and volume, and that connection is density. So one way to think about it is if I take the volume and multiply by the density, as long as these units are the same, it's just dimensional analysis there. They're going to cancel. So what I do is I say, okay, well, the water is at 20 degrees. I want to go look and see what the density of water is at 20 degrees. And I especially want to look for something that has liters in it. Because that's the unit I have. Mm, meters cubed is not liters, so I don't want to use that one. That's always the first one that comes up, but the, the, it's the wrong units for us. Um, oh, this one looks pretty interesting. So four degrees they list it. Let's see. I want to get as close to 20 as I can. So here's a table. Here's 20. There's the density, 0 0.9982. Okay, so over here back in our problems, we know we now know the density. So this is a homework, so you can use the internet to help you, right? Oh, and the units from that are grams per milliliter, which isn't quite the same, but we know how to go from milliliters to liters. So I'll do that first. I'll go from liters into milliliters using my metric conversions. And so we cancel the liters. Then I want to get into grams, and I can do that using this density because it's milliliters on the bottom, so that'll cancel, and that'll give me an answer. So I'm just going to put in 0.5 times 1,000 times 0.9982. And that's the beauty of dimensional analysis, is that it allows me to do multiple conversions all at once. So my mass is 499.1. I only have two sig figs in this number, so technically this is my last significant digit. I'm just noting that. I'm not actually um, rounding at this point. Okay, so it's looking for Q, and we have a mass of 499.1 grams. Again, not rounding. There's my heat capacity, and the temperature change is 17 degrees. So, I find out the calculator says it's 35, um, 466 here. That's joules because grams cancels, degrees C cancels, leaving joules behind. I only have two sig figs, so this is my last significant digit. But the question asked for it in kilojoules, so I got one more step before I worry about sig figs. I'm going to convert it. And kilo always means a thousand of the little thing. So I'm going to divide by a thousand here because I want to cancel the joules. And now I'm going to worry about significant digits, right? So the answer to this is 35.466 kilojoules. The right number of sig figs is just two, so that means it's going to be 35. <coughs> Okay, this is a longer one. I'm going to make this a little smaller so that we can stay on the same slide um, if possible. We'll see. Yep. 
you have this as your worksheet, so you can always read it on your own on the worksheet. There we go. Okay, so we have three different specific heats listed here, and it says a chemistry student finds that 1.47 kilojoules of heat, so that's Q. I'm going to do the same thing as always. I'm going to try to get it back into these units where the, oh, whoops, not equals. Basically, I'm trying to always make sure that my units are going to cancel with the heat capacity units because I don't want to have to do extra work. Um, and I don't want to multiply something that doesn't make any sense. So 1,000 joules for every one kilojoule. So we got 1,470 joules. Now this zero is not a significant zero, only the numbers are significant here because that's what I started with. And it raised the temperature of 19.70 grams of something. It's an unknown thing, so it doesn't have the heat capacity of water. It, oh, it's one of these three things, I guess. Um, and it's going to raise it by... So when it says by, that's already a delta T. I have nothing to subtract. So I just write it down. So it wants to know which substance it is. So people solve this in different ways. Some people will just take this heat capacity and plug it in and solve to see if it matches your Q here and other people solve it like an algebra problem. Either way is fine. So if we're trying to find heat capacity, we figured out earlier that the formula looks like that. You just divide by mass and delta T on both sides. So I'll just plug that in. Again, the bottom part has to get done separate from the top. If you put it in your calculator as 1470, um, divided by 19.7 and then times 36.4 it's not actually putting the 36.4 in the bottom it would be multiplying by the, the whole thing so just use parentheses or you can put in 1470 divided by 19.7 equals um, in this case your calculator will tell you that it equals 74.6193 and then you divide again because that 36.4 is on the bottom it's being divided by and so the heat capacity that it gives me is 2.04998. No units cancel, so we got all of them in there. Um, I only have really three significant, I got four here, but three here and three here. So we're going to just round that to 2.05. So that doesn't answer the question because it wants to know which substance is lit. Oh, this one. So to answer the question, we have to say that the unknown is acetic acid. That's acetic acid, not acetic acid, just so, just so you know. Acetic acid is vinegar. Okay. Um, and then finally, the density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. What volume in centimeters cubes can gold absorb? Okay, so here we go. A density provided here, and I remember from our units chapter that centimeters cubed and milliliters are the same thing so I just like to I know that I'm not going to use centimeters cubed it'll be probably milliliters oh or I can keep it in centimeters cubed because the question wants to know it in centimeters cubed oh and absorb 2.03 kilojoules so I'm going to convert that so what you should be noticing at this point is that I look at the units all the time. When I see kilojoules, I know that's heat, and I know i got to convert it because all of my um, heat capacities are in joules. So it's kind of like a reflex that you develop. You see a unit, and you assign it to a variable, and then you try to get it, if it doesn't already match, you try to get it to match the uh, expected units. And it says the C is 0 0.128. Hmm. So our equation is Q equals MC delta T. And I just like to rewrite that so I know. Um, oh, and the delta T is 5.00 Celsius. So we have this, we have this, and we have that. So we're probably searching for a mass. I'm just rearranging the equation. From here to here, we divide by C delta T on both sides. So I get Q divided by C delta T. Um, and so I'm going to put it in. Oops. 
I don't know why that's a dotted line. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so here we go, 2300 divided by 0.128 and also divided by 5. 3593.75, so the mass is big. That would be um, grams because everything else goes away. Okay, I only have uh, three significant digits, so that's my last significant digit. All right, that doesn't answer the question. The question is asking volume. So I'm gonna use the density like this. But the units don't work, right? So if we just multiply by 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed here, that's not gonna work. See, they don't cross off. So that can't be used that way, but it's a fraction and we learned that Fractions are just relationships. So really what this is saying is that for every 19.3 grams, I have one centimeter cube. So I can flip it over so that the thing I wanna cancel is on the bottom. Now that works. So I'm gonna put into my calculator, 3593 divided by 19.3. And that'll get us centimeters cubed because that's the only unit that's left standing. I only had three sig figs, so I'm just gonna round. My calculator says 186.205. I'm gonna leave it at 186 centimeters cubed. Okay, so this is a bit trickier because now um, the, d the density is being used kind of flipped from what we're used to. But just like I can flip joules and kilojoules however I need, you can do the same thing with the density. Okay, so now we're going on to the calorimetry section. These, this is the same equations, just um, more variables. So it's easier to tackle this if you define the variables. So like for example, calculate the specific heat of a metal. So that's gonna be the C of a metal object. I use this subscript to indicate that I'm looking for the metal's heat capacity, not whatever else is in there. It says it, the, if 2.36 times 10 to the two grams of it, so that's the mass of the metal, because we're still talking about the metal. And you can leave it in exponential notation. Remember that you need to use the capital E button or EXP button from your calculator to calculate things correctly if you leave it. Or you can use what we know about scientific notation to convert it to 236. Oh, that's grams too, put the grams. Either way is fine. Okay, so that's the mass of the metal at, okay, so the metal starts off at 99.5, that's for the metal. And we're putting it into water at 22. So this is the initial temperature of the water. So now we got a bunch of temperatures. This is the part that's confusing is the temperatures. So I like to make kind of like a table where we have the stuff about the water and the stuff about the metal on two different sides. So the water starts off at 22.0. The final temperature of the system is 25.9. That means that the water's temperature at the end is 25.4. Did I say 0.9? I meant 0.4. And it means the metal is the same temperature. So they, they trade heat until their temperatures are equal, until temperature stops changing. So that means the final temperature of both of them is the same. Okay, so we're trying to find the heat capacity. I don't have a Q over here for the metal. I do know the uh, heat capacity of water. And the only thing I haven't used yet is the volume of water. And of course, the volume of water doesn't enter into the equation, but we just learned that the density of water is around 0.998 grams per milliliter. So I can use density, and you could look up, if you wanted to be really diligent, you could look up the density at 22 instead of 20, but it's gonna be pretty close. So I'm willing to accept a little error here, that's okay. And so we find out that we have 124.75 milliliters of water. This is our last sig fig, but I'm not gonna round yet. So I can find the Q of the water 
by plugging in the information we have here, because now I know mass. Oh, I put milliliters, I'm sorry. We canceled the mills, that's grams. We know the heat capacity. And we know the temperature change, because it's just the final minus the initial. So your delta T here would be 25.4 minus 22, so that's 3.4. I'm still keeping that tenths place because it's a significant figure. But now I only have two sig figs because that's such a small change in temperature. So, calculator says that the Q for the water is 1772.95 joules. I, again, I know I only have two significant figures, but I'm not going to round yet. The equation that relates the Q of the hot object, that would be the metal here, and the Q of the cold object, that would be the water, is that they're the same number but opposite. So I can find the Q of the metal just by turning this into a negative sign. Oops. Okay, so that's the Q of the metal. Now I have everything I need in order to solve this. The delta T here is going to be the final minus the initial. So that's a negative number. Twenty. That makes sense because the temperature of the metal went down. It got cooler. It gave away heat. So that's negative 74.1 degrees C. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange the equation so that I'm solving for the C. And we decided earlier that means you go Q divided by M equals delta T. So I go negative 1772.95 on top divided by 236 grams and also divided by negative 74.1 degrees C. It's important to know that you can only have a positive value for heat capacity. You can't give away heat without absorbing it. So that means these, when you put this in your calculator, you gotta keep the negatives because they're gonna cancel each other out. One on top and one on bottom. Whoops, I almost multiplied when I meant, it, meant to divide. That was close. All right, so I go 1772.95 divided by 236, and then um, equals something, and divided by negative 74.1. So we get a positive 0 0.101. Um, 383 is what it says. Joules, grams, C, that all stays. I only have two significant figures because of the temperature, so I can only say that it's 0. 1, 0 joules per gram degree C. This zero is significant because it's after a number and a decimal, but this zero is not. Okay? So that's that one. Okay. Um, the mass of the chromium is 95.3 grams. And the temperature, so that would be an initial, I think, because it's the first thing I ran into. We put it in a calorimeter with 75, so this is about the water, 75 Oops, sorry. I don't know why I wrote a Z. 75.2. Um, you know, I'm going to do the water in blue. Why not? 75.2 milliliters of water. And it's at 20.5 degrees C. So this is all about the water. And over here, this is all about the metal, the chromium. Like I said, I like to keep them separate because it can get really, really confusing about what I'm doing. Okay, after stirring the final temperature, so it's the final temperature of everything, is 28.6 degrees Celsius, and we want to know what the specific heat is. Okay, um, another fact we have about water, of course, is heat capacity and density. This is, again, close to the same density we had earlier, so I'm just going to go with it. So I can use that again to get rid of the volume. Seventy-five point oh five is what the calculator says, so I'm just going to write that. There are more digits, but I rounded here because I know I only have three significant figures in that measurement anyways. I don't want to round too much though. So again, I can calculate the Q of the water. I can go 75.05 grams times heat capacity times, oh, the change in temperature is going to be 28.6 minus 20.5. 
So that's 8.1 degrees. So again, the temperature limited our significant digits by took down to two. Oh, whoops, too much. So the answer is 2,541. Um, I'm going to keep those even though I know that most of them are not significant. That would be joules. That's for the water. So now I know that the Q of the metal is negative 2,541 joules. So if I want to know the heat capacity, I'll just plug it in. Now the delta T here is going to be the final, which is 28.6, minus the initial, which is 90.5, and that is negative. Again, that makes sense because it means that the chromium is giving up the heat. It's the hot object. And I put the parentheses around the temperature because you have to do that subtraction before you can plug it in. And so after all of it's said and done, the calculator says 0 0.430746 joules per gram degree C, but I only had two from my temperature, so it's going to be, uh, oops, not negative, it's going to be 0.43 joules per gram degree C. Well, now I could go look that up. I could find out how pure my chromium is. I could go look it up in a table and find out um, if that's close to the actual